as the Atlanta Braves come to town. The Braves have won five of their last seven games and bring in one of the top pitching staffs in the majors. Anewi Rodriguez takes the mound for the Astros in search of his first career win. Astros baseball is next on Fox Sports Houston. In Houston, Texas, Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight is the first of four. The Astros meet the Atlanta Braves. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. The Braves bring a contending team with airtight pitching to Minute Maid for this series, J.D. Uh, Braves just got done sweeping the Florida Marlins, a series in which the Braves only scored seven runs. That's how good their pitching has been. They take a backseat to nobody. But right now we're going to focus on first base, a couple of talented young first basemen on display in this series. Braves have very high hopes for Freddie Freeman, just 21 years of age, very nimble around the back, a big guy. And like Brett Wallace, they think the Braves, the Braves believe Freeman will develop power as his career moves along. He's hitting 271 with five jacks. Brett Wallace, 317, four home runs. He's driven in 19 runs. On the mound tonight, the Braves go with right hander Tim Hudson, who has one of the best winning percentages around. Hunter Pence has a 20 game hitting streak. He and the Astros meet Hudson and the Braves next. By the Progressive Insurance Group. For money saving car insurance quote, call 1 800 Progressive today. And by Southwest Airlines, new rapid reward, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. 
Back at Bennett Bay Park, the Astros are just now taking the field with a roar of the fans as they open this uh, series with the Braves with Rodriguez on the mound looking for his first victory in what, in a way, might be a tryout for who, in fact, is going to be in the starting rotation after Sunday. This is a big game for Rodriguez. It will be a big game for Lyles tomorrow. So that gives it something extra going for it. Greg Lucas down on field level, and as the teams are uh, getting set to start this game, let's go back upstairs to Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies for the lineup and the first pitch, guys. Thank you, Greg. And as an AOA Rodriguez takes his warm-up tosses, you see the cotton candy, we see the Braves lineup. Jordan Schaefer leads it off in center field. It's Dan Ugla, a slumping second baseman at 170, batting second. Chipper Jones is the third sacker. Freddie Freeman's the cleanup man at first base tonight with Alex Gonzalez at shortstop. Eric Hinsky in left field. David Ross, the catcher. Matt Young in right field. Tim Hudson, the pitcher. Well, as Greg mentioned, Anrod looking for his first major league win. He certainly pitched well enough to win a, a number of times this year. He's made seven starts. Look at his last three outings. A solid work Saturday in San Diego. With a loss, and then the previous two starts, no decisions in Chicago on a windy day. Tough day to pitch there. He allowed four runs in four innings, and then against the Dodgers, six innings of one run baseball. Really solid effort. And that game, but again, no decision for Rodriguez. Defensively, Lee Bourne Pence in left center and right. An infield of Johnson, Sanchez, Keppinger, and Wallace. Glenn Barmas gets a night off. J.R. Tools rarely gets a day off anymore. He's back in there tonight. He'll be getting one off tomorrow night. He is quite banged up right now. And Brad Mills would like to get him some rest. The newcomer, Carlos Corporan, is now the backup catcher. And he will be catching tomorrow night's game. JR putting on the mask, ready to put down some fingers for Anaoi Rodriguez, looking for his first major league win. And it's Jordan Schaefer, a 196 hitter with one RBI to lead it off. Schaefer was called up from Triple A Gwinnett to take over for the injured Nate McLeod. He's 24 years old. He was with the Braves in 09 in the major leagues for 167 at bats. Looks at the fastball. That makes it a 1-1 count with Rob Drake, the home plate umpire. Hate the Drake. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Love the Drake. Jordan Schaefer's from Hammond, Indiana. Good defensive player. It's two balls and a strike to him. And Rodriguez making his eighth major league start. Has an ERA of 5.28. As JD mentioned, he's had his good games this year. That one you mentioned against the Dodgers. The Astros won that two to one, but he got a no decision. Good fastball. Oh boy, Schaefer with a healthy rip at that heater, but coming up empty. The Braves are going to see a fastball that will fluctuate between 90 and 93 miles an hour. Curveball, change up, and an occasional slider. Schaefer takes a ball and he's worked a full count. Schaefer fouled the ball off his face last Friday on a butt attempt. And he had a small non-displaced sinus fracture. Missed the game Saturday and was back in the lineup Sunday. And he's drawn a leadoff walk. The Braves are 13th in run scored in the National League. They really had to scrap for runs, but they just swept the three-game series for Florida from Florida. Scoring a total of seven runs in those three games. On a couple of three to two and a one to nothing game. Terry Pendleton's the first base coach looking across for signs. Meanwhile, it's Dan Ugla in the batter's box. 170 for Ugla. Seven homers, 16 runs batted in. After signing the huge five year deal as a free agent to leave the Florida Marlins and join the Braves, he has really struggled. Ugly's had a couple of days off to try to regroup with that struggling batting average you saw. Freddie Gonzalez in his fifth year as manager has a winning record joining the Braves this year after being with the Marlins. And Ugla, of course, was a Florida Marlin who hit 33 homers and drove in 105 last year, far from where his stats are right now. Runner going, and the throw is not in time to get him. Stolen base for Schaefer. He's four for six. Braves are dead last in base stealing. That's their 15th steal of the season. Struggling to score runs as they are. You can understand that Freddie Gonzalez is going to try to shake things up a little bit and run when he has guys who are capable. And 
JR has not had a lot of success throwing out base stealers, and Anuria Rodriguez has had zero success at stopping base stealers. They're now 11 for 11 with Rodriguez on the mound. One and one to Ugla, batting second for the second time this year. He gets a breaking pitch for strike two. Ugla was drafted by Arizona in 01, and then Florida took him in one of the best Rule 5 picks in recent years after the 05 season. He had uh, five straight years of 27 homers or more for the Marlins. Oh, wow. Over his head, and it's two and two. A little late reacting to that, too. That was scary. Ugla's been going through. <laughs> okay, what is that, man? I'm hitting buck 70. Yeah. Right? Went through a lot of changes with his hitting, trying to get that stroke in the right spot with the hands in the right place and everything. So he's probably thinking quite a bit. In the air, and that one will go toward the seats and out of play. Douglas from Louisville. Went to Memphis University. In 06, he was an all star in his rookie season with Florida, and he set a major league record for homers by a rookie second baseman with 27. But down to 170 this year. Yeah, lifetime 257 hitter, so he's never been a high average guy. But down below the Mendoza line now. Right, three call. Rob Drake has caused Hugler to react in a negative way. Let's see it. Of the drinks outside corner bottom of the knees and after you've had one buzz your tower it's tough to do a whole lot with that one he's just late getting the hand started there no chance to put a swing on that fastball Chipper Jones 39 year old possible Hall of Famer steps in with a runner at second and one out he's hitting 396 with runners in scoring position 252 overall with five homers he's driven in 32. Ball one of the switch hitter, one of the best switch hitters of all time. Well over 400 home runs, and he is really ripping it in these situations this year for the Braves. Freddie Freeman's on deck. A late game situation, a tight game with the base open. You Probably just go ahead and put Chipper on here, but top half of the first inning. I don't really think along those lines. For the man on base, you're setting him up for a big inning, and that's the one thing you're trying to defend against in the early innings. Chipper puts it in the air, foul. Tolls goes for it. Johnson there. Tolls. Was able to pick it up. At first, it was only Johnson. Then Tolles was able to pick that ball up and make the play. Two zero fastball right down the middle, and Chipper got after it, but it popped it up. And fortunately for Rodriguez and the Astros, it stays in play. Obviously not the way you want to make your living as a pitcher having to throw two off triple fastballs to a guy like Chipper Jones. No it's not. But he got by with it. And that's a big out for Rodriguez in the early going moving along to Freddie Freeman now. That's the advantage of having a little life on that fastball. He throws a lot of four seam fastballs and he's a guy who can beat you up in the strike zone. Get some swings and misses. Freeman has rallied lately to get up to 271 with five homers, 22 runs batted in after a slow start. Second round pick in 07 in the draft by the Braves from Fountain Valley, California. He lines one past the lunging Wallace into right field, and the Braves will grab the lead one to nothing on the RBI single by Freeman. 23 runs batted in for Freeman. Is so often the case. The leadoff walk comes around to bite Manuri. Walk stolen base, RBI single by Freeman.
Freeman takes his lead. Alex Gonzalez is ready to hit. Gonzalez, who hit 23 homers last year for Toronto and Atlanta, was traded by the Blue Jays to the Braves in July. And a deal involving shortstop Escobar, who's playing pretty well for Toronto this year, and the pitcher Jojo Reyes. But the Braves like what Gonzalez has done for them. They're strike one. Six homers, 19 runs batted in this year for the 34 year old veteran from Venezuela. But he had gone 23 games in a row without driving in a run going into the Florida series. Throw goes over. Well, the Braves, you mentioned that stolen base, that proved to be big for them here in this first inning. They haven't done that very often this year, but Schaefer. He's done a pretty nice job for them defensively and helps out to get them an early run, and that can go a long way with this Braves pitching staff. Foul ball. Chris Johnson watches it drift back into the seats. No balls, two strikes. The Astros tonight announced the signing of their second round draft choice already. Right handed pitcher Adrian Hauser. From Locust Grove High School in Locust Grove, Oklahoma. 6'4, 205. There's a lot of kids from Oklahoma, pitchers in particular, drafted quite high this year. They must have good pitching genes up there. <laughs> they must have. Congratulations, Adrian. Yes. What an exciting time for him. 18 years of age. I think we're going to get him on later. That's right there for a strikeout looking on Gonzalez. One run, one hit. One man left for the Braves, and Tim Hudson takes the hill with a 1 nothing lead. Against the talented right-hander Tim Hudson with this lineup for Brad Mills. Michael Bourne in center field. Angel Sanchez shortstop. Hunter Pence right field on a 20-game hitting streak. Carlos Lee left field. Jeff Kepinger second base. Brett Wallace first base. Chris Johnson third base. J.R. Tolls the catcher for an AOA Rodriguez. Tim Hudson now 35 years of age. Right-hander with a very good sinker ball. Is uh, not having his best years. Four and five of the 4.14 ERA. The, uh, the other numbers are good. You know, the walks, strikeouts, home runs allowed, batting average against all that tells you that it's probably been a little bit unfortunate with that 4-1-4 ERA. So, had a couple of rough ones in recent starts. Strike one to Michael Bourne. Major League stolen base leader with 26. 275 is his average with one homer. He's driven in 21. He chops it over the mound. Gonzalez crosses over, can't get to it. Ugla picks it up behind second base. Infield hit, Michael Bourne. It's 
Hard to get him when he hits a high hopper over the mound like that. And once a guy by Hudson is going to be very difficult for anybody to make a play. Tough to make a play on any number of guys and extremely difficult with Bourne. It was kind of fun. Ross was jumping behind home plate. He was trying to. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was jumping. He, he was kind of <laughs> trying to get Hudson to spring with him. <laughs> 16th infield hit for Michael. He's 26 of 29. You know, if you're the catcher, you want that play made because you don't have to deal with trying to throw him out. <laughs> True. Angel Sanchez just looked at strike one, 261, in one homer. He's driven in 18. A night off for Clint Barmas at shortstop gives Sanchez some playing time at that position. Raids are set up for a double play with Gonzalez and Ugla. Well, and that's the thing with uh, Hudson out there and all the ground balls he gets. You've got to be willing to start some base runners, either try to steal a base or play hit and run. Eight double plays induced by Hudson this year, 32 last season. Bourne was thrown out last night by the young catcher Tony Cruz with the Cardinals trying to steal. That's a liner out to center field. Schaefer waiting in for the catch. One out. That's the, actually the first time all year Michael has been thrown out by a pitcher catcher combination other than on a pickoff in Toronto because of the three times he's been caught the first time was on a pickoff throw to first by lefty Chris Capuano. Now Hunter Pence. He's in the top 10 in batting average. And in runs batted in and in doubles. He was second in hits with 82 and he has been sizzling on a 20 game hitting streak. With 45 runs batted in for Hunter. During the last 20 games he's hit 388. 33 for 85. Top to shortstop Gonzalez comes in for it throws on the run gets Pence. Two outs born to second base. Should be a busy night for the infielders. We'll look first at the outfielders. Hinsky, Schaefer, and Matt Young. He's from Temple, Texas. He's out there in right field. It'll be fun to watch him play. Jones, Gonzalez, Ugla, Freeman cover the infield. Freeman will save his mates a lot of errors. He can really pick it down there at first. The veteran David Ross is behind the plate for Tim Hudson, who's also a very good fielder, good, good athlete. Hudson, he can do it all. Good pitcher, good defensive player, and a good hitter, too. 262 for Carlos Lee, five homers, 32 runs batted in. He calls time and backs out. Carlos, though, has robust numbers against Hudson, 379, one homer, 10 runs batted in. Carlos was three for seven with a homer in the Cardinal series. He looks at strike one, and that on the heels of a 333 average for the last road trip. Well, Carlos Lee has been coming around. He's been on base in 17 of his last 18 games while hitting 318. Kepinger's on deck. He takes a ball and it's one and one. Hudson is three and zero oh in his career against the Astros with a 1.19 ERA for regular season work against Houston. Phenomenal. That is the sixth lowest ERA against Houston of all time. Tommy Hansen who pitches in this series number one for at least four starts. His ERA 0.90 and he tops the charts. That pitch right there called the ball and that could be very significant if Hudson can't get that pitch down around the knees called and he has to elevate. Obviously that sinker is not going to be nearly as effective if the Astros will lay off that low ball. See there, it looked like it was on the plate, knee high, certainly over the plate. Players tend to miss down more than they miss up. Saw so Hudson and the wins that he's been piling up in the last decade or so is one of the best winning percentages of all active pitchers. He's in the top 20. Just off the plate. He can pitch, but he knows what he's doing. He missed a start at Pittsburgh on the 25th of May with lower back tightness. And in the month of May, his ERA 4.11, not what it had been in April. That's a strike, and that makes it 3 2 now to Carlos. Time. 
And Drake called that pitch that appeared to be just off the plate inside, but he sat up inside there and he sees that ball better. Tap foul. Hudson has a three game losing streak. His last win was May 4th, game two of a doubleheader. What a beautiful game that was for him. A one hit shutout in Milwaukee. An eight to nothing win. Tough fun to shut down, Good. especially in their ballpark. Last time at New York on June 5th, they gave up seven hits, five runs in four innings. Lost the game 5 4. Braves beat the Astros in both their meetings in Atlanta earlier this year. Chopped up the middle. Ugly to his left. And he takes care of the third out with no runs a hit and a runner stranded. It's one to nothing Braves after one. Cancer Center making cancer history. It was in 1967, June 10, when Jimmy Wynn at the longest home run in the history of Cincinnati's Crosley Field off Reds right-hander Mel Queen. Look at this one. This monstrous shot cleared the 58-foot scoreboard in left center, bounces out onto Interstate 75 outside the stadium. Jimmy said it was headed toward the house where he grew up. That was a big moment for Jim. Back what, to you guys. What a home run. One nothing Braves. Eric Hinsky takes ball one. Jimmy lived on Colerain Avenue, and he said the ball wound up on that avenue, and not too far from where his home was. Amazing. 283 for Hinsky, six homers, 15 runs batted in. It'd be unique in baseball history to hit one on the street you grew up on. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else can make that claim. <laughs> Maybe not. One and one. Martin Prado's on the DL tonight. So Hinsky playing left field. Prado has a staph infection. And underwent a procedure. So Brandon Hicks is on his way, might be here now to replace him on the 25 man roster. That one hung up there, and Hinsky got out in front of it, sent it soaring high in the air, and foul. Scramble for it and the counts one and two. This game one of a four game series that wraps around including the Monday night finale. Tomorrow night a 605 start. Good pitch and he struck him out. That's number three. A wobbly with that breaking ball in the first inning but able to come back here and snap off a good one to finish off Hinsky. Now it's David Ross, the backup catcher. Brian McCann is having an all star year, but he's resting tonight while Ross plays at 293 with three homers, nine runs batted in. 
Let's hope McCann rests all night tonight. <laughs> came off the bench in Atlanta and hit two home runs. Game tire and a game winner. That was quite a performance. Like out of the natural. Yes, it was. Well, Ross is a good backup. And one with power. There's ball one. David, 34 years old. He worked his way through the Dodger organization, then he moved along to the Pirates in San Diego, Cincinnati. Last year he had 121 at bats with the Braves. That's, that's called turning on one there. Yes, it is. He's a pull hitter. That guy's happy he is. Hey, he brought the glove. Good move tonight. Ladies are thrilled that he brought protection for them. He's the coolest kid in class right now. <laughs> Absolutely. He's the guy. Up and in for a ball, two and one. In class, the bell rings and he leaves class. Everybody's going to want to walk with him as long as they can before they have to <laughs> peel off and go to their next class. This is the 13th start of the year for David Ross. He puts that one way in the air on the yeah. infield. Let's see who grabs it. Wallace. Two outs. That's a serious altitude on that baby. Yes, it was. A roof scraper. A fair ball that hits the roof is still in play. That did not. This one was in the air. Michael Bourne could have come in and caught this one. That's how high <laughs> that was and how long it was in the air. <laughs> As J.D. mentioned, here's a native of Temple, Texas, Matt Young. 138, looking for his first RBI. They list Matt as 5'8". I'm guessing he's about 5'5". Five five. He is a one little dude. But he's strong. He's got a quick bat. He can run. Born in Temple, went to a Plano East High School and then the University of New Mexico. Six years in the minors. Taps that one foul. He got his first major league hit on Wednesday at Florida. Started the year at Gwinnett. He was hitting 273 there with nine runs batted in. Jason Hayward is on the disabled list. He was the right fielder, but he's been out for some time with a right shoulder problem. He's in Florida now. Wallace tosses to Rodriguez. And they get out number three, from three to one, one to nothing, Braves.
baseball fans. Chevy's proud to support youth baseball leagues in your local community. If you'd like to learn more about Chevy youth baseball programs, you need to go to youthsportswired.com. And coming up in the next inning, guys, we're going to be talking to Adrian Hauser, second-round draft pick of the Astros, signed today. Look forward to that. Thank you, Bart. One to nothing Braves. The Astros bat with Jeff Kepicher leading off in the home second. Prospects get younger and younger looking. Did you see him down there drinking that drink? No. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's about 12 years old. <laughs> 277 for Kepinger. One homer. He's driven in six. Smacks a line drive hit into left field. Two leadoff singles in the first two innings for the Astros. Wallace strides up there to face Hudson. Hudson has been just as good as lefties as righties. Left in an hitter shooting 236 against him. Righties 239. If you're a left handed pull hitter, he'll take advantage of that by throwing you that sinker moving down and away. And a pitch that if you try to pull, you're not going to do much with. But, but Brett, pretty good at staying inside the ball and hitting it the other way. So this might actually be a pretty good matchup for him. He gets a breaking pitch and it's good for strike one. Wallace is on a four game hitting streak. Went to the 17 game winner last year. Wallace continues to hit for a high average. Eighth best on base percentage in the National League. Fox tracks brought to you by Steele. As soon as you got slider. Inside third and up a little bit, but good enough for a strike. Sink piece. Sinker baller. A lot of times, if they figure early on that they're getting the movement they like, they'll they'll ride that pitch heavily. They'll throw it 80 percent of the time or more. Hudson is four and five right now. He has never had a losing season as a professional pitcher. You got good movement there on a foul tip strikeout. Wow. First saw Hudson years ago out in Oakland in interleague play. He and those wall were matched up. Chris Johnson, a 228 hitter with six homers, 28 runs batted in, comes up next. Strike one for Hudson, who went to Auburn. He was a sixth round pick by Oakland in 97. In 01, he faced the Astros. Tim Redding on the mound in Oakland. I knew it was one of our young phenoms. Yeah. Little chop. Hit slowly. Chipper Jones going over to Freddie Freeman. Gets Johnson. Keppinger to second. Two outs. And it's J.R. Tolls next. He's had a lot of good pitching over the years. Hudson and Zito and Mulder out there. They got a pretty good bunch now, too. Yes, they do. Even with the injuries they have. Hudson had double figures and wins for his first 10 major league seasons. Tolls at 210 with three homers, has driven in nine. Moves in on the corner for strike one call. They are chase that one. It's no balls, two strikes. Throws the previous pitch, the two seam fastball running in on him, then he counters with the hard slider moving down and away. Very difficult to recognize. Want to get the head out in front so that two seamer that runs in doesn't 
chew up your knuckles trying to get the barrel out in front and then he counters with that off speed or that breaking ball going the other way. It can make you look silly. Upstairs for a ball one and two. Hudson told you about that three and oh career record against Houston with an ERA slightly above one. That does not include two postseason starts in 05. And he lost to Andy Pettit in Atlanta in one of those. Didn't pitch well at all. In the other one, he started the 18 inning game here against Brandon Backey. Gave up three runs in seven innings. Got a no decision. There's the stop by Ross, and it's two and two. And in that game, the Braves had a six to one lead. In the eighth inning. He left with a couple of men on base and later scored. Brooklyn Grand Slam. Yep. Austin's home run off Farnsworth. You got it. Chris Burke home run in the 18th. That was it. Three dramatic home runs. And Lance's Grand Slam kind of gets lost in the in the shuffle there. True. But it really shouldn't, considering there was a five run deficit. Tolls is down on strikes. It still runs one hit. One man stranded. It's one to nothing Braves after two. Gentlemen, right here is Adrian Hauser, who was the second round draft choice of the Houston Astros. Talk a little bit about what this meant to you. I mean, it's a realization of a lifelong long dream. Uh, it means everything. It means I can get to play baseball longer. I mean, I've wanted to since I was five years old. I've wanted to play pro baseball. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, you were committed to Oklahoma, is that correct? Yes, sir. The, the phone call changed that pretty quickly, huh? Uh, pretty Fairly quickly. <laughs> it changed it pretty fast. All right, so here's the tail of the tape. Uh, Adrian is uh, 6'2", 205, right-handed pitcher. Tell us what kind of pitcher you are. Power pitcher, uh, what's your repertoire? Uh, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. I like to get ahead early, throw a lot of strikes. So now you're richer than all your buddies. What do you do with the signing bonus? <laughs> um, put it away. Put it in the bank. Save it for when I need it. Well, that's going to be hard to do, Adrian, because those buddies are going to be coming after it. Yeah, they will be, but I'm going to say, guys, no. It's my money. I'm putting it up. And a boy. How, how excited are you to be a part of an Astros team that's, that's uh, this is a point where younger players are getting a chance to advance through the system pretty quickly? I'm very excited. It uh, means I have a chance to get there fast. I'm just ready to go. Have they given you an assignment to start yet where you'll be? Uh, I leave Monday, Monday to go to Kissimmee. He'll be headed to Kissimmee, Florida on Monday. Well, the foundation of a good baseball team is pitching arms, and now the Astros have one more good one in their system. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Bart. There's a pop-up. Red Wallace over to retire Tim Hudson. That's out number one here in the third inning. And let's get a big arm like that. Big, strong kid. Very athletic. Also played outfield in high school. Got him on the gun at 94 miles an hour. Hunter Pence was congratulating Bobby Heck, who... Conducts the draft for the Astros and supervises all the scouting for his drafting of the pitching talent this year around the batting cage today. 
Jordan Schaefer led off the game with a walk. He stole second and rode home on a two out single by Freddie Freeman for the game's only run. The Braves now are without their center fielder Nathan Clough. Played most of the time before he got hurt. They are without their left fielder Martin Prado. They are without their right fielder Jason Hayward. This is a trend that's pretty much gone on all year long. The Astros have run into teams who are really banged up and able to really take advantage of it. And it seems like uh, just about everybody we play has one or two of their marquee guys out of action. It's two balls and a strike. Greg Lucas mentioned when we came on the air that with Rodriguez pitching tonight and Jordan Lyles tomorrow night, and then Wandy Rodriguez back in the rotation Monday, somebody will have to go in this rotation. We don't know who it will be. Brad Mills is keeping that very close to the vest. Two balls, two strikes. Brad Mills does not want Rodriguez and Lyles. To think that this is a, a final audition to see who stays in this rotation. He does not want to put that kind of pressure on them. Well, they kind of know it anyway, to, to a certain extent. Michael Born back at center, two outs. You know, in, in that they know somebody's going to have to leave the rotation, and it's going to be one of those two guys. Mm -hmm. um, but whether how they pitch this weekend has any bearing on that, nobody knows the answer to that. Brad Mills probably already has his mind made up. Dan Oglo was caught looking in the first inning. Well, Rodriguez here is a Rule 5 draft choice from Tampa Bay. So the Astros would risk losing him if they tried to send him to the minor leagues. Yeah, if, if, uh, if he leaves the uh, rotation, he'll just go back to the bullpen. Well, that would be the option there, yeah. The other one is not an option. Jordan Lyles will not go to the bullpen at the big league level. No. Going to start every fifth day somewhere. One ball, one strike. Big series in Milwaukee involving the top two teams in the NL Central. St. Louis nothing, Milwaukee nothing after two. Kyle Loesch versus Chris Narvison. Congratulations to Tony La Russa as he manages his 5,000th game. And that's something. Under the second man to do that. And I can say that with a certain amount of certainty because they have a roof there in Milwaukee and they're not going to get <laughs> rained out. That's ball, no foul. Two balls, two strikes for Ugla. Yeah, and that's the kind of ball you hit when you're in the funk like Dan Ugla. Mm -hmm. He takes as big a swing as he can take and he hits it right off the end of the bat. Ugla led all National League second baseman last year in OPS 877. In the air, and this one is foul. J.R. Tolles will watch it drift out of play. Still two and two. Braves four and two on this road trip. They lost two of three at New York, but then swept Florida. They are at a season high, seven games above 500, 35 and 28. 44 pitches for the right hander so far. Ripped on a line. That's a fair ball into the corner. Ugla heads for second base. It's double number nine for Dan Ugla. Second hit for the Braves. And one thing most major league hitters can do, even when they're struggling, is hit a hanging breaking ball, and that's exactly what Ugla got here. It's a cement mixer that hovered out over the plate. And uh, buggy whipped it into the left field corner. He's aboard for Chipper Jones, who fouled out on a 2 0 fastball in the first inning with a runner at second base. Chipper's a 314 career hitter against Houston. That's strike one to him earlier. You saw where he ranks on the switch hitting home run list. Very high. It's been a terrific career for him. 
304 lifetime hitter with 441 home runs. This ball makes it 0 and 2. Chipper was asked about uh, Hayward. Jason out with that shoulder injury, and Jason apparently made a statement he's not coming back until he's 100%. Chipper was asked directly about that, and that was a quote that you probably saw a few days ago saying, well, not very many people are at 100%. 80% of him is better than 100% of other guys. Foul back, and uh, evidently the way the story came down, he didn't feel that he was calling out Hayward because they had had that discussion before. He had made that point with him. There's a breakdown. Yeah, it was like a lot of uh, stories. There was a long conversation, and that was one of the points he made in the conversation with the writer, apparently. But that's the one that grabbed all the headlines. Kind of made it look like he was calling out Jason Hayward. And despite what he says, to a degree, he was calling him out and right. talking to a writer and saying what he said. Right. But you know, he's got he's got credibility. He, yes, had, he, does. he you know he's been around forever. He's played through injuries. And. and Basically, that was the point he was trying to make to Hayward. Is you know, I remember as a young guy having to learn that lesson. Hayward's been out for weeks right now, and he has told people that the shoulder injury stems from spring training. Two balls, two strikes. We were talking with some Braves followers who say that he did have a good two-week stretch or so. Hayward did when he was pounding the ball. But he's slowly working his way back to the lineup right now, and the Braves would love to have some more power. They're 13th in run score. They're averaging 3.76 runs per game. Chop slowly. Wallace barehanding, tossing and tossing it by Rodriguez, and now the run will score. To make it two to nothing, Braves. A slowly developing play. <laughs> was that ever? <laughs> Everything about that play was slow. Slow ground ball. Chipper doesn't run well. It just took a long time for Rodriguez to get over. Very difficult play to complete, too, for Brett Wallace to throw him back in the opposite direction. Once that pitcher's passed you by, that's a tough play to make. Ugla coming all the way with two outs, scored run number two. It's going to be ruled a single for Jones and an error on Wallace. Allowing Ugla to score that run. Wallace's third error of the year. And Freddie Freeman bats. Ground ball foul, strike one. And a big, tall, left handed hitter. Typically, those guys are good down. And that is the case with Freddie Freeman. Very good low ball hitter. Chipper Jones takes off. Here's J.R. Tolls with the throw on the wrong side of second, and he steals it. That's all about the scouting reports right there. They are convinced they can run crazy on this tandem of J.R. and Anrod. First steal for Chipper. He was five for five last year. Parents are here. Because <laughs> dad's laughing at him for stealing a base. <laughs> probably is. He probably told his dad before the, before the game, I'm going to get a bag tonight, dad. Chipper has a ranch in Carrizo Springs. Two balls and a strike. Isn't that where Chipper comes from? Because he looks like his dad. He's a chip off the old block. He sure does. He was born in Deland, Florida. Went to high school in Jacksonville. Those folks have been running that ranch for years in South Texas. And he gets hitting tips from his dad from time to time over the phone. He's fallen off that breaking ball. He's done it a few times in the game already. Sometimes you do that when you try to snap off a really good one. The front, the front shoulder flies open. And, and just the exact opposite happens. You end up throwing that hanger. Now 
Now three one. He's going to need to come up with something here on Freeman. There's a high one to right field. This one will soar way over Hunter Pants. That's headed for the upper deck. Monstrous two run homer by Freeman. Almost as far as Lance Berkman's last night. There have been some tape measure shots from Berkman and Freeman. Back to back nights here in Houston. And that was right in his sweet spot. We talked about his ability to handle the ball down and in. Boy, is he ever good in there. <laughs> that's a that's one for the, uh, the scouting tape right there. Taking shots inside on Freddie Freeman. Infrequently, and if you do make it up, push him off the plate. Those people don't expect to get a home run ball up there. Alex Gonzalez cranks one. He gets rid of the bat easily. They're getting up in left field, and this makes it back to back shots for the Braves. He gets number seven on consecutive pitches. The Braves really move out in front. And it's 5 0 Atlanta now. A series of bad pitches really and Murray got two quick outs he had two outs nobody on he hung that breaking ball to Ugla. He delivered the double then a little more than a little. A misfortune and a little ground ball off about a chipper Jones turned into a base hit the air allowed Ugla to score but. Freeman jumped all over that inside fastball and then. Another mistake to Gonzalez and he could make you pay. It's a good hitting shortstop over the years maybe not for high average but. Better than average power for that position for sure. 144 career homers for Alex Gonzalez, and it's 5 0. Hinsky looks at it. There's another guy you got to be careful with. That's the one thing this Braves club does. They don't steal a lot of bases, they don't go first to third, but they do hit the ball out of the ballpark. Lashes a line drive caught by Kappinger. And some hard hit balls ring throughout Mid and Maid Park. A rough third inning for the young right hander. Gives up four runs on four hits. 5 0 Atlanta. Like it. And by AT&T, rethink possible. As the Astros come up on the bottom of the third, I want to offer some congratulations. You know, tomorrow night we're going to honor Brownie for 25 years behind the microphone here for Astros baseball. Well, the man who actually started it on this network, Jim Durham, more noted as a basketball announcer, was announced today as the winner of the Kurt Gowdy Award, longtime resident of Tomball. He will go into the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's the equivalent of the Ford Frick Award. This summer, so congratulations to the original JD here on our telecast. <laughs> That's right. Strike one to Rodriguez, leading off the home third inning, five to nothing Braves. He is 0 for eight. Two singles for the Astros off Hudson so far. Now the Braves have backed him with the early run support. When a Braves pitcher has a five nothing lead in the third, they're thinking it should be over. 
and this guy, you know, it's, it's a kind of a tired cliche, but he, uh, quote unquote, knows how to win. <laughs> He's just a smart veteran pitcher. He's not going to walk people. One and two here at Minute Maid Park. He is one and zero with a 1.06 ERA in two regular season games. Chop goes foul. Yeah, Jim Durham once upon a time did some Astros pregame shows before some of the Sunday games on Channel 20 way back when. Very good professional. So it's the Kirk Gowdy Award. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. The, uh, for basketball. Greg will have to tell us more about that. I wasn't aware of that award. It's basically the same as the Ford Frick except for basketball and they. Present it during the they also have a similar one for uh, writers just like they do in the baseball Hall of Fame. Hudson gets a strikeout. Number three. He's been around a long time. He's with the Chicago Bulls and then he. He came here and did the Astros for three years when his bull situation strangely enough was a little shaky. But he, he, gained, he got it back and then he ultimately went and worked for ESPN for a long time. In fact, I think he's doing the finals on radio now. Ah. Yeah. Kirk Gowdy do Celtics basketball or was it just do network he, stuff? He or? did some network stuff, but he was a basketball player in his youth. Really good player, I think, at Wyoming. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He was a good fisherman, too. Yes, he was. What was that show? The American, the American Sportsman? Sportsman. Yeah. Very good show. Mm -hmm. Michael Bourne. Reached on an infield hit, advanced as far as third base in the first inning. Smacks one out toward right center field. That's a high fly for Michael Bourne. He's going to take off. Around second, easing into third base. A stand up triple for Michael Bourne, his fourth of the year. Well, he put a charge in that one. We talked about the dangers of a sinker baller when he elevates. Needless to say, this is a run you've got to cash in. Down five, man on third, less than two outs. He must come home. Great swing of the bat. Very <laughs> speed personified. And Michael now takes his hitting streak to 11 games with that one. The earlier hit actually moved him up in that position. Now here's Sanchez in tight ball one. Fly ball to center in the first inning. He's back everywhere on the infield except for Chipper Jones at third base. Brown ball anywhere but third or the mound. We'll get one home. Hudson throws a strike. It's one and one. Down five. You're hoping for a little more than that, but. At the very least, I hope we get that much. Astros 15 games below 500 right now. They have lost five of their last six after winning the first four on that last road trip. Cracked bat roller, Bourne coming home. Jones with the throw to get Sanchez. It's five to one on the RBI by Sanchez. His 19th, Bourne creating that run, and now 100 points will come up with nobody on. Well, that's uh, you, you love to hit behind guys with speed. They create RBI opportunities for you. Get a broken bat, ground ball to third, and you get an RBI out of it. Sanchez making contact. It's the Astros on the board now. Pants hit the first pitch on the ground to shortstop in the first inning. Club record hitting streak: 30 games by Willie Tavares in 06. Jeff Kent had a 25 game streak in 04. Among those in recent years, Miguel Tejada, a 21 game streak in 09. Hunter trying to tie that mark tonight. And the slider brings a check swing call. Gary Darling's the crew chief and the umpire at first. 2 0 for Hudson.
shot. 21 game hitting streak for Hunter Pence. Hit number two of the inning, and Hunter's aboard for Carlos Lee. That's an elevating a little bit in this inning. I don't know if it's a little bit out of whack or with the big lead. He's trying to be a little bit more aggressive, but more line drives and thinking about getting that ball down around the knees again. Yeah. Four hits for the Astros now. Carlos Lee grounded out earlier. Phillies lead the Cubs 3 0. They're in the bottom of the seventh at Philadelphia with Carlos Zambrano on the losing end of that one. Dominic Brown hit his second home run for the Phils. Through ball strike one. It's Roy Halladay with the shutout going for Philadelphia tonight. Imagine that. <laughs> Not a surprise. Uh, that's another guy who's starting to fall into that category. It's Anibal Sanchez for the Marlins. He's working on a shutout. It seems he does that just about every time out now. Holiday trying to become the first nine game winner in the National League. That's a strike to Carlos. It's 0 and 2. Jeff Kepinger's on deck with Tim Hudson leading 5 to 1. Braves starting pitchers have the second best ERA to the Giants starters in the National League, slightly ahead of the Phillies. 3.24 for the Atlanta group. Out into left center field. Hunter takes a turn, heads for third base. Carlos will go as the ball is mishandled into second base. And the Astros have two men in scoring position now, and they hit by Lee. I'll tell you what, Tim Hudson looks like he could be had tonight. Going along nicely the first couple innings, but he's left a lot of balls up. This time he's trying to throw a breaking ball off the outside corner, and it floats over the inside part of the plate. But Two strike mistake for sure. Single E8 is how you score. That's how Carlos gets the second base. And now Kepinger up there. The Astros in a great position to get back into this game. Hunter Pence is not running well. He might have hurt himself his first at bat. There are two outs. He's grimacing there at third base. First time up on the ground at a shortstop. It looked like he was laboring a little bit going down the line. Some kind of leg issue or foot issue, ankle maybe. Capinger the batter. Maybe even like an oblique or a back. The way he swung at that ball. Yeah. That was Jordan Schaefer's first error of the year, allowing Carlos Lee to go from first to second base. And Hunter, when he was nearing second, had two outs in the inning. He always runs harder than that, so he's not quite right. It's one and one. We were talking about it earlier. Nursing injuries in baseball. Listen, who is at 100% in June among the everyday position players? Hardly anybody. Two and one. It's not going to get better from this point. Well, you know, it's, and again, it's that line between aches and pains. Injured. Hayward obviously is injured. Tap the shortstop. Gonzalez charging, throwing on the run to a stretching Freeman for the third out. And the Astros in the third settle for one run on three hits with an error. Stranding two. It's five to one, Atlanta.
on Atlanta. Jason Michaels is replacing him in right field. There was a discussion with Brad Mills and Hunter. Here's the evolution of it. First time up. Ground ball to shortstop. Laboring to reach first base. And Kimpy. And then that first to third. A real effort on the two out hit and error. As he neared second base, you could tell something was wrong on that hit. Something barking at him. Now we go to the fourth inning. And the score five one Braves. There is the first pitch with Michaels in right field. It's ball one to Ross. Bouncer goes foul. It's one and one. Well, Hunter already has extended his hitting streak to 21 games. At least he doesn't have to leave after an 0 for 2 with an injury and lose the streak. See, Browning, that's what I like about you. Your glass is always half full. <laughs> well, and you hope that the precautionary move here will not cost him games. There's a play by Sanchez. Nice play lunging on the hot line drive hit by Ross. One out. Yeah. Brave hitters here. A succession of very successful at bats where they're squaring it up pretty well. David Ross drops the head on that low pitch. But on hell Sanchez there to gobble it up. No soup for you. That was almost by him. Scalded by Ross. Young comes up. He grounded out to the right side earlier. Stirring in the Astros bullpen. There is strike one. And Ariel Del Rosario is beginning to get loose. The pitcher spot would come up in the bottom of the inning if the Astros get a man on. It's 0 and 2 to Young. Matt Kemp has been scratched from the Dodger lineup tonight. Late scratch with tightness in his left hamstring. He's played 268 consecutive games. That's the longest active streak in the majors. You don't want to have to miss games at Coors Field if you're a hitter. <laughs> he went and struck out. We go to Bart. All right, Brownie, not only will Jordan Lyles make his first home start at Minute Maid tomorrow, but as we've been talking about, the Astros will also honor J.D. and Brownie. The Astros host the Braves at 6.05, and the first 10,000 fans will receive the dual Jim Deshays and Brownie bobblehead, courtesy of Coca-Cola. Go to Astros.com to get those tickets. I can't remember us ever giving away a double bobble. Yeah, they but gave clearly, away Milo and Ash a few years ago. Did oh, that's they? right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well, clearly two heads are better than one. Years and years of lobbying on our part, <laughs> begging and phone calls. And it's finally paying said, off. All right. Yeah. Enough of you bozos. We flew to China, Stop paid some whining. people off, and got it done. <laughs> Fly ball <laughs> off the bat of Hudson. Jason Michaels in sliding, and he turns around, looks in his glove, and he has out number three right there. In the fourth inning, the Braves are out in order, and they lead it five to one.
and take a look at our farmers insurance report card. Tim Hudson getting loose for this half inning. He has a 2.2 ground out to fly ball ratio. That's eighth best in the majors tonight. Five grounders, three in the air. We just got word on Hunter Pence. He left the game with lower back tightness. It's hard to do anything athletically when your back's acting up. Oh, no. I mean, it's just so it's such an important piece of the equation, no matter what you're doing, what, what sport. Red Wallace struck out earlier. There's strike one to him. Hudson keeps it in tight on Wallace. Johnson and Tolls to follow. Tempers have flared in New York with the Indians playing the Yankees. It's Fausto Carmona drilled Mark Teixeira in the upper right back. Yeah, I was good. I was in the uh, batting room back here when that happened before our game. Teixeira started yelling on Girardi. I think was the first one out of the dugout for the Yankees, and he and Manny Acta really got into it. They were screaming at each other. It's good stuff. And there were some. Uh, Problems Girardi had in the previous series with the Red Sox with Big Poppy flipping his bat after a home run. One and two. Curtis Granderson hit a homer and the Yankees went up for nothing. Chopped up the middle, slowly hit, ugly in with time. Makes the throw to a stretching Freeman who's a very good first baseman defensively. One out. Yeah, it was after the Granderson home run that the uh, share got hit. Okay. And that's, that's what caused all the fireworks. Okay. Talk about Wallace maybe being uh, Hudson being a good matchup for Brett because of Brett's ability to go the other way, but at both of his at bats he's been pulling off the ball. First time up he struck out, and that time the front shoulder kind of leaking a little bit, almost like he's looking for something in that he can turn on. Mm-hmm. Chris Johnson grounded the third earlier. Fouls it for strike one. The Mets are pounding the Pirates eight to one after seven. Pirates' top three catchers are injured. It's no balls, two strikes. Catching now, Manny Sanguian. We called up uh, a couple of rather unknown guys from the minor leagues. Chris Snyder apparently is going to have back surgery. Houston native. Ryan Domitz out. Jason Jaramillo's out. Chipper Jones to his left. Quick release. Two outs. Hudson back to the ground ball routine here in this inning. Dusty Brown is catching tonight. Dusty Brown. Okay. Sounds like a paint color at Sherman Williams. <laughs> <laughs> or the color of most of our cars with this drought. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a quart of dusty brown. <laughs> Some of that nice peach. J.R. Toll struck out in the second inning. Dusty Brown. That's not anybody's real name. Well, uh, Brad Mills was talking about that. He was with Red Sox when Brad was there. Dusty Brown was? Yeah. Oh. This should be your nickname. It should be actually. Dusty Brown. <laughs> they strike one to Tolls. Ride your horse in to do the game. Tied up outside the ballpark. Absolutely. One ball and one strike. What do you think his given name is? Yeah, it's probably like a family name, probably Thurgood or something he just couldn't live with. <laughs> Breaking pitch, a strike call makes it one and two to JR. Pitcher spot do up next. Rodriguez is on deck, but the bullpen is busy in case. Jordan Lyles goes tomorrow night. It'll be lefty Mike Miner going for the Braves. Chopped up the middle. Agon sliding and throwing, and Alex Gonzalez. Mm, pretty. Yes, he does. Excellent play. Three ground ball outs in the inning for Hudson. Five to one break.
Now for the progressive fan of the game. And Astros are honoring Texas A&M and their grads here tonight, so our fan of the game has to be an Aggie. Gloria Franklin, excited about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Gloria has been a lifelong Astros fan, went to the first game ever played at the Astrodome, in fact, right? That's correct. Yes, my cousin was one of the first original Astroettes, and I got to go with her, and it was a great game, great game, never forget it. But you started out listening to Colt 45 baseball, right? I started out sitting at the feet of my grandmother watching Colt 45, and if anyone came in and wanted something to eat, she said, the kitchen's there, and we watched the game, so, yeah. And then she went on to play softball at Texas A&M and has been a huge Astros fan ever since. Ever since, even when I'm out of the country. Finally, we have MLB.TV, and right. I can I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and watch it from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, wow. love it. So she's been following the Astros her whole life, and we like to reward that kind of loyalty. You are the progressive fan of the game, Gloria Evans. Back to you guys. Wow, that's some loyalty. Wow. Yeah. 3 a.m. Saudi Arabia. How about that? This ball one to Schaefer leading off the fifth inning. Braves lead at five to one. You made a good choice, Bart. Puts a lot of pressure on us to pay attention, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, if she's getting up at 3 a.m. <laughs> at least I can do is pay attention. Stop pumping around the internet. Wow. That's the beauty of the internet. You get instant feedback. Dusty Brown? Mm -hmm. His real name is Dustin. Dustin? Yeah, Dustin William Brown. I was hoping for something a little more exotic. <laughs> That's the best we can do. The facts are the facts. That's a line shot by Schaefer into center field. And he's aboard with a single here in the fifth inning, which would be Rodriguez's final inning if he can get through it. But he has Ugla coming up, and Ugla ripped the double off him in the third. All right, and uh, action in the Astros bullpen. And I think Millsy was going one batter at a time, and that first batter didn't turn out so well, so he's going to make the move. And it's a double switch. Matt Downs is coming out toward the field. Now he's going to wait. Brad Mills coming to the home plate umpire, and that's the way it's done when making a double switch. Before he crosses that line, he needs to tell the home plate umpire. The two moves he's making, and Chris Johnson's coming in from third base. He made the second out in the fourth inning. So Downs goes in to play second, and he bats ninth. And the new pitcher, Del Rosario, will go into the uh, number seven spot in the order. This call to the bullpen is presented by Verizon Wireless. More in a moment. Player and become the ultimate Whataburger water fan. Come out June 15th for an autograph session with the Astros first baseman Brett Wallace and Junction Jack at the Whataburger at 8820 Highway 6 in Missouri City from 11 to noon. While there, you can sign up to be the ultimate Whataburger water fan and have a chance to win two sweet tickets for the Astros game on September 24th. And get this, Whataburgers for a year. Plus, be on the field for batting practice thought the first pitch. It's great stuff. Don't miss this chance to meet Brett Wallace at Whataburger. Guys, back to you. 
All right, as Brett Wallace gets set, it's Matt Downs across the diamond at third base in the double switch. And an Ariel Del Rosario doing the pitching. Facing Dan Ugla, who doubled and scored in the third. He's one for two. Del Rosario, like Hudson, he's a sinker baller. He can get you that double play ball. For that one. <laughs> ball one. <laughs> Sinking on no. neck high fastball. First to first base. Schaefer stole the base back in the first and scored the first run on a Freeman single. Philly's got four in the seventh inning and they have opened up some distance, leading the Cubs 7 0 after seven. Plus, it Opolanco hit his fourth home run. Halliday with the shot out working Zambrano started for the Cubs. Foul ball back into the seats. Big C will be able to hold his temper after this one. Oh yeah. Screaming about them not scoring any runs for him or something. <laughs> Mets leading eight to one bottom of the eighth at Pittsburgh. As a Reyes hit his second home run. For the Mets, and he's been manufacturing a lot of extra base hits this season. He's having a heck of a year. Yeah. 11 triples last time I looked. Yeah. Well, some people think he should be dangled as trade bait. A lot of people in New York think he should be locked up. A lot of their fans. Runner going. Tolls with a throw. Safe. Schaefer steals it for the second time tonight. It's his fifth of the year. Now, Tolls coming into this game and throwing out five of 30. Pretty close there. He made a good throw. It's two and one on Ugla. Curtis Granderson's homer in that Yankee game was his 19th. 2 to the count. Alex Rodriguez hit his 12th, and Carlos Santana, number seven for the tribe. Chipper Jones is on deck. The count goes full now. UDR has given up runs in each of his last, excuse me, each of his last two appearances. And there were multi multiple inning appearances. Both times he came in at a real nice clean inning, and then that second inning out there is where he ran into trouble. It was a pool holes home run that got him here the other night. Line foul. Prior to that, he had 13 straight scoreless appearances. Talk with Carlos Corporan a little bit before the game tonight. He'll be catching tomorrow night with Jordan Lyles on the mound against lefty Mike Miner. Carlos, 27 years old, just arriving from Oklahoma City. Struck him out. Just had a brand new baby boy just a few days ago. Yeah, he did, and he had to have a procedure on his heart. Mm -hmm. Rosario taking a little bit off, and an ugly swing from Dan Ugla. <laughs> Chipper Jones reached on the infield hit in the third and he stole a base and scored on the tape measure homer by Freeman. He's one for two. Pokes that one foul for strike one. So the little guy's doing okay though. He's doing okay and uh, when he gets to be about two Carlos was saying they'll have a chance because he would have grown so much to do more surgery on the heart. But uh, prognosis is very good. Carlos had been injured before that, so he's been through a rough patch lately. Line shot back, Carlos Lee and left. He will play it off the wall, barehanding it as Schaefer comes around to score and make it six to one. RBI single, Chipper Jones, 33rd run batted in. Once again, Schaefer's steal pays off and translates into a run later. Chipper Jones so strong with just a flick of the wrist he drives this ball to the wall in left field. Uh, on a line so Carlos didn't have time to get back under it. Good read by Schaefer. 
Schaefer made some things happen. Chipper providing hit number seven for the Braves. Freddie Freeman loops a line drive to right. He went out and hooked that one into right field. And he's three for three in this game. The three runs batted in. Quite a night for Freeman. It's only the fifth inning. Yeah, and this is a Braves team that had been struggling to score runs. For an AOE Rodriguez tonight, four innings of work, six hits, six runs, one walk, four strikeouts. Gonzalez made it back to back Braves homers following Freeman's long ball with one of his own. He's one for two. Rodriguez threw 71 pitches, 46 were strikes. Foul ball there, third base way for strike one. It's Seattle three, Detroit two at Detroit, bottom of the eighth inning. Justin Smoke hit his 11th homer. Victor Martinez, he's number uh, six. He's been hitting a lot of home runs lately. It's Smoke sure has. The Mariners have really improved. They're one game over 500 now. One and one. So, would you say of the Mariners fans, smoke gets in their eyes? I would think so. Okay. Florida six, Arizona four. They're in the top of the eighth at Florida. Logan Morrison hit his eighth. Mike Stanton number fifteen, and John Buck number seven. Boy, that Eduardo Perez is some kind of hitting coach. <laughs> yeah. He just took over. One day on the job. He's smart. He waited till the Braves pitching staff left town before he took that job. <laughs> With the manager who calls the team meeting the night uh, before the game when he's got his ace going. <laughs> you have to pick your spots. Good play there by J.R. Tolls. And that swerving slider, it's two and two. Up ready to react, and that was a key. And good mobility on that one. Mm, different way to watch a game. It's close. No advance by the base runners. It's three balls, two strikes. Baltimore five Tampa Bay nothing They're in the top of the fifth at Baltimore Hardy and Marquez have gone deep for the Orioles. Jake Arrieta on the mound for them. It is trivia time. Let's see. Greg Lucas comes in here doesn't he. Oh yeah we got to do the question. The uh, Braves started in Boston but what was the team's nickname for 24 years before becoming the Braves. 24 years. Yeah a long time. Did it have anything to do with consuming food? That would be correct. Okay. Would it be something? No, we'll, we'll wait. Yeah, now you know, so we'll, we'll hold off. Let it time to put it in the pot. Yeah. And stir it up a little bit. Yeah. Greg, uh, when you're having soup, what is your favorite type of soup? Oh, I like. Uh, I like bean soup. Okay. It's pretty good. It's yeah. uh, it's pretty good soup. Uh huh. Yeah. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this line of questioning. It's irrelevant to the case. Okay. Well, I can give you some also nicknames that wouldn't have been the correct answer. Okay, go because ahead. Because they were also known as the bees, the bees. rustlers, the doves, and the red caps. The rustler. You know, Dusty Brown should play yeah. for the rustlers. Yeah, he he would have been a good fit for that right. club. Wrangler Jane could have been their mascot. <laughs> Out to right center field. This one cracked a long way. And that shoots the gap and goes to the bullpen wall. That'll score a couple. As Gonzalez is around second, slamming on the brakes, and the Braves get two runs home on his double. A three RBI game for Gonzalez, giving him 22 for the year and making it 8 to 1. Third consecutive outing now for EDR where he's gotten hit around a little bit. Like Chipper Jones, Gonzalez going the other way with authority. That ball really jumping off his bat. Didn't look like a real big swing, but 
Hit it a good long ways. Yeah, it was surprising the way that ball jumped out there with that swing he put on it. Now Hitsky makes a ball one. Hitsky is struck out in line to second. Would it be the bean eaters, Greg? We can hear a bell, a faint bell from afar. Yeah, we can hear it. <laughs> there it is. Now we can hear it. There you go. You are correct. We can, we can hear you all the way up here <laughs> without the mic being on. That's pretty good. Yeah. 1883 through 1906. They were the officially, they were called the Boston Bean Eaters. So Boston to Milwaukee, Milwaukee to Atlanta. This one gets away from Tolls, and he no, can't no, find no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, now they're going to try to score. Nope. Ends on the brakes. Gets back to third. Gonzalez came roaring around third base. His Tolls couldn't locate it because he was in some pain from where that ball hit him, I think. Well, it got the umpire, too, and, and it deflected. You know, when the ball passes by you on this side of your body. You don't expect it to end up on the third base dugout. But it hit the home plate umpire's shoe and kicked over towards the brave dugout. Gonzalez had designs on scoring the run. Now the infield moves in. Capitcher backhands, checks the runner at third, takes care of out number two. Let's see, Greg, what is the answer to that <laughs> trivia question? Is it the Boston Bean Eaters? It is the Boston Bean Eaters. <laughs> okay. And, and that was from 1893 to 1906. So they've had three different cities, but they've only been the Braves in Milwaukee and Atlanta. Okay. They had other names in Boston. You know, and, and uh, Boston baked bean is a really good candy. I don't know if you've had any of those lately. Uh, no, not lately. Not the last 20 years or so. Yeah, you, you had to revisit them. Okay. I did just that not long ago. Took me back to my youth. David Ross looking at ball one. He is 0 for 2 in this game. What is that definition of insanity? You keep doing the same thing over mm -hmm. and over again and expecting a different mm -hmm. result. Right, yep. It's kind of like that trivia question we just did. <laughs> just kept doing it over and over. <laughs> but the result was the same, Greg. We were hoping Answer for something was different. Always the same. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. I think we've got the one for tomorrow. You're going to have to be a movie expert and a baseball expert. Oh, both. that's JD. This. This might be a bell ringer, but I'm not sure about tomorrow. Well, let's see. Baggy will be with us tomorrow. Depends on how many clues I get, I think. Okay. Well, Brownie's watching, or if Baggy's watching the home tonight, he can start researching right now. <laughs> yeah, he'll be going through movie titles. He doesn't need to learn anything about baseball because Lance Berkman has already given Yeah, he us already his. knows everything about baseball. Yeah. That's a walk to Ross. Very nice quote from uh, Lance in the article by Richard Justice today. Concerning Lance's opinions of the Astros. Now Brad Arnsberg out to the mound on a struggling Del Rosario here in the fifth inning. In a situation like this, you don't want to use up everybody in your bullpen. Right, right, exactly. You got to find somebody out there who can hang in there and and give you a couple innings and save the rest of the guys in the pen. Well, it is a long season, and every team goes through stretches with relievers of struggling. You know, just think of how many appearances most of these guys make 50, 60 appearances. Some of them are not going to go well. well. And that's why it's so difficult to predict from one year to the next what your bullpen is going to do. <laughs> because the body of work. Or especially a young guy who doesn't really have an established track record. You know, you can get fooled one way or the other. You can see a guy in one year and go, "Yeah, this guy's not so special." And you know, three years later, you look and he's established himself as one of the better relief pitchers in the league. Or you can see a guy light it up for one season, but you know, 50 relief appearances is typically 50, 60 innings at best. So maybe he just was hot, got lucky, things broke his way for a year. Got to be careful not to assume too much. Line into center field. A hit in front of Michael Bourne to make it nine to one. Braves. 
RBI single for Young. He gets his first run batted in. That's five hits and a walk in the inning. Braves rolled in pretty late last night, got in around two, showing no ill effects from that. With a banged up team and a night that uh, Freddy Gonzalez rest Brian McCann. Does yeah. not matter. You've got to be feeling really good about that situation. Strike one to Hudson. Hudson's 0 for 2. Well, this gives Freddy Gonzalez all kinds of options as to how he uses his bullpen tonight. As long as he wants with Hudson, or if he's got a guy or two that needs to get an inning of work, it's there for him. Broken bat roller to third, downs, throws across, and the Braves bat around in the fifth inning, coming up with four runs on five hits. They lead it nine to one. as we head to the bottom of the fifth. But on Saturday, June 25th, the Astros and Boot Campaign present a post-game concert featuring Creed frontman Scott Staff. The Astros host the Rays at 6.05, and a portion of the proceeds benefit the Lone Survivor Foundation to, re to support returning war veterans. For more information or tickets, go to astros.com slash boot. Nice to see Scott Staff resurfacing. I was a big Creed fan. How about you guys? J.D. was, weren't you? Creed, yeah. uh, they're good. You know, the, the days of like buying music kind of passed me by. I haven't bought music in so long. I listen to what my kids listen to, and then I listen to all my old stuff. Yeah. Driving in today, as a matter of fact, I had some good old stuff going on. Okay. This is Alabama versus Auburn. Matt Downs Ooh. batting. What do they battle for? Um, What's that called? The Iron Bowl? It could be the Iron Bowl. Yeah, that sounds right. And wasn't there some uh, vandalism at a tree at Auburn, some Alabama? Not sure about that. Yeah, there's some famous tree. Okay. At Auburn, and some Alabama fan went and poisoned the tree. Oh, that's. And he popped off about it on talk radio. <laughs> Gonzalez throws out downs. One out in the fifth. I think that's a story. Okay. Michael Bourne with an infield hit and a triple. Off to a nice start tonight. As two of the Astros' five hits in this game. This crowd would love to see the Astros get a little something going. They've been fairly enthusiastic. 
Despite the fact that the Astros are down nine to one, you get the sense that if the Astros could put a little rally together, these folks would have some fun. Sure they would. Strike one to Bourne and Sanchez on deck. It's one and one for Tim Hudson. Typically very efficient, and that is the case tonight. He's made 60 pitches to this point. Gets born on a swing and a miss for a one and two count. Tim Hudson grew up in the country, five acres of land. There's one four way stop sign in the middle of town in Salem, Alabama. So the, the comparisons between Hudson and Oswald run pretty deep. Mm -hmm. They're winning the way, the way they've won at the major league level. Upbringing. He said there was not a lot of trouble to get into. That's a fair ball. Third hit of the game for Michael Bourne. It kicks back toward second base. And he's in with a double. Now single triple double for Michael Bourne tonight. Michael Bourne can hit for the cycle. Wouldn't that be fun. Got one home run this year, a wall scraper, and that, that's that approach I was talking about earlier with the left-handed hitter off Hudson. When he throws you that sinker running away. If you try to pull it, you're not going to do much with it, but stay on it, shoot it the other way. A lot of times, good things will happen. Mm -hmm. and it's the 15th double for Michael Bourne. He's aboard for Angel Sanchez, who's 0 for 2 with an RBI on a ground out. Jason Michaels is on deck. Hopefully, uh, Hunter does not miss much time, if any. I mean, you leave the game with the uh, what they call it tightness in the back, yes. tightness in the lower back. Lower back tightness. Mm -hmm. Little chop, Hudson. Takes care of that out. With Bourne taking third, two outs. Time for a look at our Brown hand center. Great hands of the game, showing you a Sanchez play on that line drive. Up the middle. He grabs for it, reaching high, and Jason Michaels coming in. in the shallow right field for a sliding catch. How about that? On hell gets a spot start, replacing Barmas. Michaels comes in to replace the injured Hunter Pence. Both make outstanding defensive plays. Now Michaels up for the first time. Hunter Pence was one for two. Jason's hitting 178 with one homer. He's driven in three. This one gets by, and Michael Bourne will race to the plate, slide, and score. Nine to two game. Bourne scoring his 41st run of the year. Brad Mills is going to hand out a game ball after this one. You know who's going to get it. Michael Bourne is doing it all tonight. But that for instant acceleration. Mm -hmm. He scored both runs. By the time Hudson put the glove down, Michael was halfway to the dugout. It was. Hudson delivers and he misses to Michaels. Two balls, no strike. Jason. Milwaukee leads St. Louis four to nothing after five at Miller Park. Braun hit his 14th off Kyle Loesch. Mr. Narvison has the shutout working. Narvison has been scuffling lately. Well, Hudson, they say, has not quite been himself in recent starts. Three balls and a strike. Had Tommy John surgery in 09. It's been his back this year, though. Three and two. Just made a handful of starts in 09, and that's what was so impressive about his comeback last year. You know, you get a guy who's well, he's 35 now, so at this stage of your career, Suffer an injury that keeps you out for almost an entire year. You just never know what, what you're going to have when you come back. 
Last year he was as good as ever. Milwaukee Brewers, as you see, Hudson's line tonight. Milwaukee is 22 and 9 since May 7th. That's the best record in the National League in that time. Hudson cuts it off and takes care of the third out. The Astros get a run on one hit and through five, it's nine to two Braves. West Airlines new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. By Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. And by Gullo Automotive, treating you like family. For the new picture on the mound, the same announcers in the booth. Joe Brown and Jim Boucher. Well, we have a little controversy on the kiss cam. <laughs> Not sure what that's all about, JD. No. She just she wasn't going to kiss whoever she was sitting next to. Okay. And Apparently there was something <laughs> deeper behind it. I don't know. <laughs> Sergio Escalona is one and zero. Oh, two holds and a 2.35 ERA. Sometimes they catch these people on Kiss Cam. They didn't really come together, but they have to be sitting together. I think we should uh, <laughs> tape Kiss Cam and then replay it yeah, for we our should. audience. Because sometimes it's the best part of the game. We might want to start that right now. In mm -hmm. fact. Escalona will be pitcher number three for Brad Mills. The Braves batted around in the fifth inning. And Del Rosario in one inning allowed four hits, three runs, walking one, fanning one. Now, as the Braves come up here in the sixth inning, it's Jordan Schaefer started the fifth with a single. He stole a base. He scored. So, two runs scored for Jordan Schaefer tonight. Not exactly the kind of game you're chomping at the bit to try to get into. Not really because when you come out of that bullpen and you're facing a club that already has nine runs on ten hits they're pretty confident. I hopper to Wallace. Maybe you're thinking well odds are in my favor we got to stop hitting at some point. That's another part of it but hitters are a greedy sort as you well know. And if they've had two or three hits in a game by the sixth inning that's not going to satisfy them for the night. Relax. Yeah. And they have a chance to build up some reserve for those slumps that are down the road. Relaxed athletes are usually better than guys that are tensed up. And ugly, you know, he, that's probably a big part of his problem. He started slowly with a new team, high expectations, big contract. Got off to a slow start, and he just has not been able to hit his way out of it. Hitting a buck seventy-two. He's a pretty good major league hitter here. Yes. And he's taking some ugly swings tonight. He has. 0 oh and 2. Escalona usually doesn't stand. Oh, yeah, he's huge. Very, very strong guy. And for a while, the knock on him was he did not have good hands at second base, but he's improved. 
Struck him out. And that's the irony because the brave people rave about his, his defensive work this year. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to sacrifice the defense to get his back. Now switch hitting Chipper Jones would turn around a bat right. He is two for three, two runs scored, and RBI for Chipper tonight. Bounced up the middle. Capinger's in front of it. Throwing him out. It's a quick sixth for Escalona, and it's nine to two Braves. games for the price of five with the Astros summer steel six game flex plan you buy five games to get the sixth one free plans are available in multiple seating sections and they start at just thirty five dollars buy yours tonight at Astros.com Brownie back to you thanks Bart it is a nine to two lead for the Braves and Tim Hudson and the Astros come up here in the home sixth inning Jeff Fulcino warming up for Houston Carlos Lee in the box and there's strike one he is one for two. He's single to left center in the third inning. At the end of the bat foul. It's no balls, two strikes for Tim Hudson, trying to square his record at five and five this season. Tommy Hansen is seven and four with a 2.59 ERA. JD mentioned Jair Jurgens, 8 and 2 with a 1.82 SDRA in the National League. Alex Gonzalez. Takes care of out number one. Derek Lowe also throwing the ball well. He's 3 and 4. His ERA under 4. And they do have some. A nice combination, it would seem, JD, of young talent and veterans in this rotation. Yeah, so they're set up for the long haul. You know, they're, they're presently a very talented staff, and uh, you see them being very good for a number of years as Hudson and Lowe move on. Hanson and Jurgen certainly will be able to carry the load. And got some good young arms. You see Minor tomorrow. Who's that? Kid Tehran. He's yes, got very good stuff. Brandon Beachy. Beachy, yeah, he's another kid. Really good numbers. Capitals one for two. And uh, from what we're hearing, the Braves are stacked up with pitching talent in the minor leagues, but really don't have a lot of position playing talent. Bullpen has some tremendous arms. So, they, if, you know, if you, got a, if you have enough pitching, then you have resources from which to deal, and if you need a bat, 
as tough as it may be, you might be willing to give up one of those talented young arms. In the hole and on through past the sliding Gonzalez. Capitures two for three tonight. Our leaders of the game is brought to you by United. Proud to fly the Houston Astros. Red Wallace is tied for third, getting 337 against right handers. He is 0 for 2 against this right hander so far tonight with a strikeout and a ground out. Been pulling off the ball a little bit, see if he can make the adjustment this time. Pretty darn good at doing that here in the early stage of his stages of his career. Wallace takes it at strike one. Jason Bourgeois is on deck. Pitcher spot is due up next. Way inside, it gets by Ross. Captain's moving to second base. Scored a wild pitch. Not the best effort from the backstop. David Ross. Fulcino's well, warming up. Sixth wild pitch of the year for Hudson. Guys like Hudson who work down below the knees tend to throw more wild pitches, a lot of sinkers and breaking balls down in the dirt. Catcher can't corral him. It's going to go as a wild pitch more times than a pass ball. Two and one. The Braves are trying to keep Brian McCann rested a little bit better than they have in the past. So he will be strong in the late stages of the season. And of course, they have a lot of heat and humidity in Atlanta. That's such a demanding position, and that's that's. Uh, why it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on what develops in Minnesota with Joe Maurer. He said all along he wants to stay behind the plate. Sooner or later he may have to be willing to move out. Three two to Wallace. And he chased that one and struck out. Two outs. Strike out number four for Hudson. Second time he's gotten Wallace. Look at the movement on that two seamer. Didn't really sink, but that ran about two and a half feet. Jason Bourgeois is a pinch hitter for Escalona. Sergio in one inning. Uh, no hits, no runs. Had no walks and a strikeout. He had a quick top of the sixth. Bourgeois has ignited the Astros to the tune of a 393 batting average. No homers, seven driven in. 61 at bats. Strike one to Houston born Jason, whose father used to work at the ticket office at the Astrodome. As a pinch hitter, he's two for seven with an RBI. J.R. Tolls is on deck. Jason just back from the injury, the strained oblique, and some time in the minor leagues to make sure that things were all right to return. Had some good successful games in the minors, and he's jumped right back into the fray and helped the Astros. Gonzalez to his right, unloads to Freeman. And in the sixth inning, it's no runs a hit. Runner stranded through six. It is nine to two Braves.
blast showing you one of the long home runs we have seen. We saw one last night from Lance Berkman. Here's Freddie Freeman ripping that back through the zone. And that one went on a long, long trip to the upper deck in right field. Did you see JR in that uh, replay? No. What was he doing? He was lunging. That gives you an idea how badly they missed. Okay. Or he missed, I should say. Only one guy threw it. <laughs> Watch JR. Oh, yeah. Because you don't want to go in there very often to that guy. That's that's his strength. Jeff Fulcino hopes not to do that. He's one and three with a 4.73 ERA so far this season. Worked an inning last night, giving up two hits and one run against the St. Louis Cardinals. El Rosario struggled. Escalona was very good. Let's see how Fulcino does here. Freeman, uh, he's three out of three. Three driven in. Up to 281 now for the season after a very slow start. Leads all major league rookies in doubles as well with 15. Scott Proctor's warming up for the Braves. Fulcino delivers ball one. Left handed hitters are hitting 186 against Fulcino, 8 for 43. It's one and one. He's had a fastball in the mid 90s at times. That one went on the board at 92. Big cut there, and it's a one ball, two strike count to Freddie Freeman. And Proctor warming up. Eric O'Flaherty, the lefty there, just walking around. Temptation if you're Fulcino after those swings has come right back with another Swifty. Popped up. Towering pop. And that downs over into foul ground. Back for the catch. Oh, no. That's some serious <laughs> hang time. He's fun. He is. Well, this is uh it's fitting because this is the anniversary of Mike Schmidt hitting the speaker in the Astrodome. Oh, for a single. For a single, yeah. <laughs> what a disappointing single. Alex Gonzalez ripped a homer in the third, then had a two run double in the fifth. He has scored two runs. That's ball one to Gonzalez. 300 feet from home plate, about 120 feet in the air. <laughs> Probably would have been about a 440 foot home run, and it's a single. That's hard to accept. Swing and a miss there. Takes the count to one and one on Gonzalez. Ichiro is sitting out for the first time in 256 games. Yeah, he's slumping, believe it or not. I didn't, oh. I didn't think he was capable of slumping. No. What's he hitting? Any idea? <laughs> One ball, two strikes. That's a slump for him. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, 252. Oh boy, he's yeah. way down. That is a slump for him. Fulcino gets a swing and a miss from Gonzalez, striking him out. Two outs, and it's Hitsky coming up. Fultz doing some pitching here, boy. Yes, he he just beat Freeman with fastballs, then he changed the game plan with a breaking pitch. You got Gonzalez, who's hot, who's not. The Tigers are hot. They're breathing down the necks of the uh, Cleveland Indians. Prince Fielder continues to hit bombs. Kemp, or Matt Kemp, rather, having an outstanding season. Carmona, we talked about him earlier. He got into Teixeira tonight. And Jason Bay has been given a couple of days off by Terry Collins. As he continues to struggle. Oh and one on Hinsky. Cubbies are making a little run at the Phillies. They scored five in the eighth to make that a seven to five game in Philadelphia. Phillies continue to lead.
I'd like to check that pitching line of Roy Halliday tonight. Obviously, he's no longer in the game. Stukes is in there right now for the Phillies. Seven shutout for Hall Halliday, struck out nine. Contreras gave it up. So Brano allowed seven earned runs and six in the third. Mm. He has a 4.40 ERA. Halliday's is 2.39 now. There are about three teams in the National League East averaging under four runs per game this year. All the tough pitching they have to face in that division, not a surprise. That's rock to left field. Very well hit, headed for the seats, reaching the seats. Hinsky takes it out to left for home run number seven. Fourth long ball, third long ball of the night for the Braves, and Hinsky now has 16 runs batted in. He's the only one of the Braves position players who had not reached base yet tonight. He's taking care of that. So, uh, as opposed to Freeman, who was trying to pull that fastball, he just punched it to left field. They're buzzing over that one. Ten to two ball game, and here's David Ross. Ross is over two with a walk. Taking strike one. The Yankees are obliterating Cleveland, eleven to three in the eighth inning. No balls, two strikes. It's Milwaukee six, St. Louis nothing. They've played seven at Miller Park. Henry Hart hit his sixth home run. Narvison still in the game for the Brewers. Trying to tighten up the NL Central. They would be a game and a half behind St. Louis if they won that one. Astros have allowed eight home runs now in the last four ball games. They've been out homered by their opponents now. 72 to 39 this year. It's two and two. White Sox five Oakland three they're in the top of the seventh at Chicago Paul Canerco hit his 16th home run at Oakland Club really in the doldrums with 10 straight losses. The White Sox showing signs of life getting back into the race mm -hmm. in the American League set. Five and a half out. When play began tonight. That's not bad. No. Getting where they were. Texas nine, Minnesota two. They're in the top of the sixth at Minnesota. Cleveland's getting thumped, so in all likelihood it'll be four and a half back. For the pale holes. Ball four to Ross. Walk number three for Astros pitching tonight. What's going on around the league? Florida won. And that's a big story. <laughs> that losing streak was eight games. Got a solid start from Manibal Sanchez, and the bats finally came to life. Florida Marlins had their longest losing streak since August of 07 until tonight. Brooks Conrad comes out. That's a little looping liner over Sanchez by Young. Young gets his second hit. Brooks Conrad thrilled. That Matt Young got called to the big leagues because now Conrad's not the shortest guy in the club. <laughs> He's coming up next to pinch hit for Hudson. What's going on over there in the junior circuit? Yankees pounding the tribe. Buck Walters O's leading Tampa Bay 5 0. After the pajama party, Tampa Bay wore their pajamas on their uh, coast to coast trip the other night from Southern California to Baltimore. Uh, arrived uh, yesterday about 9 a.m. Baltimore time. 
Everybody had their PJs on. Somebody had a, had a silk robe on like half. Oh yeah. Ben Zobris had some kind of crazy tie dye one piece thing going on. 171 for Brooks Conrad with a homer. He was an excellent pitch hitter last season. He came through the Astros farm system. It's no balls, two strikes. Yeah, had some real big moments for them last year. Some big dramatic game winning type hits. Rough sledding this season for Brooks, but nonetheless, you'll get an opportunity to play here and there on the infield. He can play second and third. And can bring a pretty potent bat up as a pinch hitter. One and two. Tim Hudson fouls out after six innings tonight, allowing seven hits, two runs. He did not have a walk, striking out four. Threw a couple of wild pitches. Hudson threw 88 pitches, 63 were strikes. And number five is in sight for him with a big 10 to 2 lead. Brooks Conrad went to Arizona State. Brooks now 31. And the dirt good blocked by J.R. Tolls. That makes it two and two. I see Cardinal Donardo and the Monsignor Shouts down behind home plate sitting next to them in planes. Oh. You get a little divine intervention. Overcome this eight run deficit. That would help. Braden and Elizabeth, I believe their grandkids are down there. We saw a couple of youngsters with them earlier. Great in the third. Three balls and two strikes to Conrad and the two outs the runners will be heading for the next base Ross at second and young at first. What do we know about the ownership change Brandon? when there's one that officially is going to take place. Don't know for sure. We've heard rumors the end of the month but we don't know for sure. Heard rumors about July. And it's going and it's foul back. It's not anything anybody would keep secret. No. They just don't know exactly when it's going to happen. Right. I think it's just a matter of doing the due diligence examining all the. Financial data. And um, it, it used to happen when the owners met. It was a quarterly owners meeting, and all the, such changes of ownership would be voted on years ago. Now that's not the case anymore. They don't have to yeah, meet. Just have a teleconference. That's right. That walk will load the bases. And it'll be Jordan Schaefer coming up. Natives getting restless. Brad Mills on his way out. Nobody's in the pen. Nope. Yeah, that situation happened with uh, Del Rosario back in the fifth inning. Brad Orangeburg going out just to help him out a little bit. Tell him you're not going anywhere. You're the guy. Got to figure it out. You know, you're talking about. Uh, we saw that Red Sox score a moment ago. Chris Johnson has predicted the Red Sox will win 100 games this year. I can't say I disagree with him. Well, they're 10 games over 500 right now at 36 and 26. The problem with that is you get so many games within the division. Right. right? And they got to beat the Yankees and the Rays, and Toronto's a pretty good club too. So I'm going I'm to take the under on that. Okay. Fly ball left. Carlos Lee backing on it on the track for the out. In the seventh, the home run by Hinsky gives the Braves a 10 to 2 lead.
Houston two, bottom of the seventh inning. Just a few minutes away, fans are relaxing, enjoying that deep in the heart of Texas song. It is Aggie night. We see some orange though. The Longhorns fans are represented too. But a lot of maroon tonight. The Aggies are enjoying the night of the ballpark. We enjoyed seeing those maroon Astros caps last night. That was a good looking cap, Brownie. Excellent cap. Tomorrow night, the bobbleheads. It's a 6.05 start time. And we hope you can join us, if not in person, right here. Scott Proctor is 1 0 with a 2.35 ERA, taking over for Tim Hudson. And uh, bobbleheads tomorrow. Brownie will be honored on the field pregame. So if you come out early, you'll be able to see that. And Brownie is guaranteed a win for the Astros because of that. It's guaranteed win night. That's the right. And if that doesn't happen, I will be at the exits <laughs> paying everybody. <laughs> JR Tolls, that's what you're doing, guaranteed win night. Tolls hit a fly ball behind second base. Alex Gonzalez takes care of out number one for Proctor. And Matt Downs will follow. Tim Hudson pitching well tonight for six innings has packed it in and Proctor taking over here and the Braves have uh, gotten some rest lately some of their relievers Johnny Venters got the save last night as they gave Craig Kimbrell the night off he had thrown a lot of pitches the night before Brandon Lyon is warming up for Houston right now. Imagine how good that pen would be if Billy Wagner hadn't retired Ooh, he was still throwing the ball quite well last year he sure was. You know, we might not have seen the emergence of Kimbrell and Venters, but Venters' numbers are absurd. He's got no <laughs> 47 ERA. Good grief. In 38 and two-thirds innings, he's allowed seven hit, 17 hits. That's a 137 batting average against. Mm. 28 base runners, you know, plus three hit batters. So 31 and 38 innings. 40 punch outs. That's Wagner like. Three balls, no strikes to Mad Downs. Mets beat the Pirates eight to one. Dylan G, the winner, he is seven and zero. Oh. Be Charlie oh, Morgan, six and two. Rookie of the year. Could be. Jose Reyes hit the only home run, in second. Now you know the Mets had hit only three homers since May 21st. That's three homers out of 484 homers in Major League Baseball. Hit by the Mets before tonight. Foul back. Well, you know, they have such a difficult park to hit home runs in, but still, that's it's not good at all. 29,252 to paid attendance on this Friday night. Well, there are a lot of questions about that Mets club. Do they try to trade Reyes or some of the other guys? They locked in some pretty high contracts. There's a ball four to downs. And the financial situation of the ball club. How will that play into the future? That, that's the wild card. Because I think if, if they get on more solid financial footing, you hang on to Jose Reyes. True. And he's such a talented player, and he's still a young player. You just don't replace a guy like that. The last cycle for the Astros came from Luke Scott, July 28, 2006. Michael Bourne needs a homer to get the cycle. Not going to mind. He had that look in his eyes, looking for a fastball in that he could turn on. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? How about an inside the Parker? For yeah, the cycle? That would be more fitting. It really would. He's pitching him tough, good fastballs away. Michael hit two homers last year, 535 at bats. He has one this year. And the ball on the second soccer gets it over two. Shortstop Gonzalez. Good play by Ugla. Round number two. Ugla worked long and hard on his glove work. With Perry Hill, the coach from Marlins. Pretty good swing here by Michael. Just didn't quite center it up. His bid for his fourth consecutive hit. Angel Sanchez has an RBI tonight. He's 0 for 3. To right field. Young waiting and catching. In the seventh for Houston. No runs, no hits, and a man stranded. It is 10 to 2, Braves.
together in the Arizona desert for one spectacular night at the summer's biggest event as Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2011 MLB All-Star Game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July 12th, live from Phoenix at 7 o'clock Central, only on Fox. Hard to believe that's just a couple of weeks away, guys. It really is, and when you go out to that game, you can gather in the desert yourself for a special camp out with Dusty Brown. <laughs> Of the old prospector. That's right. Probably be on hand as well. <laughs> and hard to quibble with uh, the voters so far. They've done a pretty nice job. They make a, a case, well, of course, at first base. They certainly make a case for Votto, the reigning MVP. He's having another big year. Prince Fielder having a great year. Ricky Weeks maybe at second base. Yeah. But uh, certainly Phillips. Outstanding player. Pools the best in the business. What do you think? Do you like those picks, Brian? Did you see anybody there you didn't agree with? No. Who'd they have behind the dish? McCann, right? Yes. Yeah, I like that. Brandon Lyon has not pitched for a while. It's been since May 4th, so about five weeks since Brandon has pitched for the Astros with those numbers. Coming back off the rehab assignment, he had uh, two appearances in the minor leagues after the slight tear in the rotator cuff. He rehabbed that, he strengthened the shoulder, and there's strike one on Ugla. Ugla has a double. Scott Linebrink warming up. A double and three strikeouts tonight. Curveball. And Brad Mills was asked about this for several days. We've been talking about Lyon. Here's the curve. Part of his uh, arsenal. He's not an overpowering closer, but, you know, what we saw all last year was a guy with a good mix of pitches who could really command both his fastball and his breaking ball. Right. And uh, you know we think of a, a tear in the rotator cuff slight tear that sounds bad. If you were to check a lot of major league pitchers they a lot of guys would probably have a slight tear and they're pitching with it. Doesn't mean it's a good thing. But uh, what he did was rehab and strengthen the shoulder and. You know when he was hurt he just didn't have that command you talked about last year. And uh, this year you could see it. So that's what Brad Mills said. Two balls, two strikes, and now it's time to find out now that he's back in the bullpen and the Astros want to see him be the closer again. Bounced up the middle, Sanchez cuts across, throws on the run to Wallace, gets it. Douglas finding it tough to buy a hit these days, almost got one. Yeah, that's the effort of a guy hitting 172 right there. <laughs> He's lunging for that bag. You bet. He did have that double earlier in the game on a hanging slider. He hasn't had too many two hit games on recent weeks. Chipper Jones is two for four tonight. He has an RBI and two runs scored. There's ball one. Mark Melanson has done a nice job as the Astros closer. Brandon Lyon has more experience. And Brad Mills defers to that. And his wish to have Brandon be the closer again. That's black to left field. And that's in the seats. Chipper Jones takes the tour. Home run number six. Giving him 34 runs batted in. That's a four home run night for the Braves. Freeman Gonzalez in the third back to back. Hinsky with two outs. Last inning, and now this off field shot from Chipper Jones who's taking a page out of Hinsky's playbook. A little message to his parents, I think, after that swing, he's punching one into the Crawford boxes. So, Chipper, and another good night against the Astros, including a stolen base. Yeah. Father looks very pleased. Now, Freddie Freeman. He's excited these Braves fans here tonight. There's strike one. Tape measure homer in the third inning and two other hits for a three RBI game for Freddie Freeman. This we're going to have to hand the game ball to Sergio Escalona tonight. We had the one two three inning. <laughs> so got it came out of this thing unscathed. One ball one strike. Troy Tulowitzki hit his 12th homer tonight for the Rockies. They got five in the fifth and they lead the Dodgers six nothing bottom of the sixth. 
two balls and a strike. The Rockies are currently two games under 500. In the wild, wild NL West. Giants are leading Arizona by one game right now. Colorado trails by four and a half. It's going to go in, and up and in is the way to go. He got it. Yeah, get him in a sweet spot there. He did. That's some sharp break to that pitch. Is that a cutter? Yeah, that's a cutter. 87, 88 miles an hour. Just a little quick darting action. In and down a little bit. Gonzalez ripped a homer in the third when the Braves hit back to back shots and then had a two run double in the fifth. He's two for four. That's Yolis Chassin tonight for Colorado shutting out the Dodgers. Up the middle and Sanchez gets rid of it. On over to Wallace. The Jones homer gives the Braves their fourth long ball of the night and they stretch their lead to 11 to 2. Freeman has had a big night, three hits. With a tape measure homer, but this one a high chopper just out of the reach of Brett Wallace. The first light freeze cam brought to you by the Frost Brewery. Coors Light. Big night for Freeman. He's driven in three. And we have changes now for the Braves. And you see a new third baseman, Chipper Jones, checking out. Diori Hernandez moves in to play the hot corner. Scott Linebreak, the former Astro, is on the mound with a one and one record and a 4.15 ERA. Yeah, good to see you, Scott. I'm back in town. Boy, he's had a nice career working on his 10th year in the major leagues. Came up with the Giants back in 2000 before coming along to the Astros. Is that, is that the Doug Henry deal? Is that what that, what was he that deal? He was in the Doug Henry deal. You're right. Boy, good memory. Wow. Hey, ring the bell for that. Yeah. Not even a question. Just ring the bell. Let's see if we can. We can hear it. We can hear it from all the way up here. It's Jason Michaels. <laughs> it's a ball one. J. Mike grounded out to the pitcher. Scott now 33 years old. Greg Wright rang the bell and the Cardinal left. He thought it was time for communion. <laughs> and we thought the Cardinals had moved on, but no. High to left field. This one's got some serious hang time. No. Uh, Hinsky. One out. Kind of, kind of Lenny Randall that one out of here. Yes. <laughs> That's out number one. Now it's Carlos Lee. He's one for three. That deal for uh, Doug Henry. Scott Linebrick coming to Houston July 
of 2000. And then he started working for the Astros that year had just a few appearances. Mark Melanson warming up in the bullpen 22 appearances in 02. There's a strike and he moved on to San Diego then in 03. But after that he really started to blossom. 73 appearances in 04, 05 and 06 all three of those years 73 appearances for Scott Linebrick. Always had that good arm and. Uh, Astros. Uh, put him on waivers he was designated for assignment and the Padres picked him up as a waiver claim. 569 appearances for Scott. He went to Southwest Texas State. The name of the school at that time. Texas State now the Bobcats. The Bobcats that's right. Hey they pretty good program. Mm hmm. It's three and one. Thirteen hits for the Braves, seven for the Astros, eleven to two Atlanta in the eighth. In the air foul. Now lefty Mike Miner will come up from the minor leagues to rejoin the Braves rotation. And Carlos is uh, grabbing the arm there of Ross. Saying something to him. Oh, he was apologizing for hitting him with that swing. Hmm. Looking up to find the ball, and you take that to the coconut. Mm -hmm. Bouncer goes foul. So it'll be minor tomorrow night. He is 0 2 this year, but he has won three major league games. And Jordan Lyles gets his first start at Minute Maid Park. Started one game in Chicago, another in San Diego, and his family's coming in to see the game tomorrow night. In South Carolina. Fastball struck him out. We go to Bart Ennis. Thanks, Brownie. Hey, fans, you can follow the Astros with MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and a lot more. Text at Bat. To 31826 or visit Astros.com for more details. Guys, back to you. That's what JD does all the time on the road. Jeff Capinger is two for three. Whoa! Sales by everybody. <laughs> Just a bit high and outside. <laughs> well, I just wasn't that far off the mark, and no. Ross just late. Late in the glove. That's why earlier in the wild pitches, I were charged to Hudson. I thought, well, that's kind of tough on Huddy to mm -hmm. slow to react back there. Maybe still seeing stars after Carlos hit yeah. him on the head. Yeah. The swing. He looked like a statue of himself. He was not moving. Kind of looked like a bobblehead. That's a tough job, though. You're right. You get your bell rung. By a guy who whacks you on the head with a bat. Umpire's just glad it wasn't on the other side. Mm. Fouled away, and it's two and two to Capitol. Well, this is the kind of game. That if you had a rookie pitcher scheduled to pitch the next day, you might be worried about him being a little unnerved watching this barrage. That he might come out tomorrow and back on his heels a little bit. But what we've seen and what we know about Jordan Lyles, I don't think that's a major concern. Pretty solid kid. I don't think the fact that the Braves have scored 100 runs here tonight are going to affect him a whole lot. Jordan Lyles, right there, 20 years old, youngest player in the majors this year. Foul back and Ross will not be able to get to it. Do you think that uh, Adrian Hauser was uh, told about Jordan Lyles or already knew about him when he was drafted in the second round at age 18 and just signed with the Astros well, tonight? I don't know how much Adrian knows about the Astros. Being an Oklahoma kid, he might be kind of clued into what's going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I imagine he probably follows. Baseball online and in the papers, and probably is aware of the fact that there's a 20 year old pitching in the big leagues right now. Two out walk. Capitures aboard for the third time tonight. 
Red Wall as follows. Well, of course, as uh, Bart discussed with Adrian Hauser, he knows the direction of this organization. He knows the Astros are trying to stockpile young talent, and he knows what the club is doing now. So it is the land of opportunity. There's the new catcher Carlos Corporan coming out to the on deck circle with uh, Brett Wallace batting. Taking strike one. Wallace has had a rough night. He's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. And Corporan preparing to pinch hit for Brandon Lyon. Corporan is a switch hitter. He'll be catching tomorrow night. No balls, two strikes. Humberto Quintero is still a ways away from returning to the Astros roster with a high ankle sprain. He's been rehabbing. His ankle's been in a boot. Wallace is expanding his strike zone tonight. Still no balls, two strikes. Yeah, he didn't have a real good read on Tim Hudson in his at bats off the veteran, and now with two strikes on him, and chase that high fastball. The, the no ball, two strike count, and the three ball, no strike pitch get erroneously called by home plate umpires more than any other pitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, in other words, on 0-2 they miss a lot of strikes. Mm -hmm. They call them balls, and on 3-0 they call a lot of balls strikes. It's kind of automatic or something. Yeah, yeah. They just, I think it's a subconsciously not wanting to influence the game, mm -hmm. not, not wanting to make a decision. They want the pitcher and the catcher to settle it with the ball being put in play or swung at. Okay. Swing and a miss, and the rough night continues for Brad Wallace with his third strikeout. After eight, it's eleven to two, Brave. and join Tom Brokaw for Boys in the Hall for personal stories of some of baseball's greatest legends. This week, we focus on Frank Robinson. It's Boys in the Hall, Sundays presented by Subway, where winners eat. Sounds like a pretty interesting program, guys. It really does, you know, with Tom Brokaw and his uh, history books that he's written detailing the World War II era. Yeah, he's, he's a good one to do that show. Now Mark Melanson with a four and one record six saves and eight opportunities a 1.78 ERA coming in for some work here after the Astros have used five pitchers already in this game. Mary Rodriguez. Venario Del Rosario. Escalona Fulcino Lyon and now Melanson. And just about everybody's been touched up here aside from Escalona. Well Melanson will take a shot at pitching a scoreless inning. Kinski Rosh Young do up for the Braves. And we saw those numbers on Mark Melanson and solid stuff across the board. A 178 ERA, three strikeouts for every walk. He's only allowed the one home run. 
That was to Brian McCann. Two outs in the ninth inning in Atlanta. And the Braves tied at 1 1. Christian Martinez is warming up for the Braves with Hinsky having homered in the seventh. He's one for four. A strike one to him. Milwaukee shut out St. Louis eight to nothing. Chris Narvis in the winner going to three and four. Kyle Loach, the loser, is seven and three with a 2.67 ERA. He's had a rough time against Milwaukee, though. He's now 0 5 in his last 10 starts against the Brewers. He's now just a game and a half back of St. Louis, one in the loss column. Milwaukee now 23 and 9 in their own ballpark. In tight. That's ball two to Hinsky. Florida got back in the winning column for the first time in a while. First time in the month of June, in fact, after eight straight losses, beating Arizona six to four. Anibal Sanchez going to six and one, beating uh, Joe Saunders, who's three and six. Two balls, two strikes. Told you about the Mets win eight to one at Pittsburgh. Boston won five to one at Toronto. Clay Buckholtz going to five and three, beating JoJo Reyes. He's two and five. JoJo had won two in a row after that long losing streak. <laughs> yeah, that was a long streak. Three balls, two strikes now to Hinsky, former Rookie of the Year. 27 or 28 starts without a win. Yeah, I believe it was 28. Swing and a miss, and a strikeout of Hinsky. I got number nine for Astros pitching tonight. Just a good four seamer up in the zone. Big swing, no contact. Kind of ironic, nine punch outs. It really is. Because in between, the Braves have 11 runs on 13 hits. David Ross is 0 for 2 with a pair of walks. Boy, Halliday goes to 9 and 3 with the Phillies 7 to 5 win over the Cubs. And Carlos Zambrano, he's 5 and 3. That's ball one. Brad Lidge apparently had a setback recently with his elbow bothering him. And the Phillies had targeted a July return for Brad. In the air foul out of play. Well, Ryan Matson has stepped in and pitched very well. I, I would assume if Lidge makes it back that he will not be handed that closer's job right away. Matson has been very very good. Mm -hmm. And they may be at the point now where they're not even convinced Brad's going to make it back this year. Could be. Foul away. One and two. The Yankees scored 11 runs. Shipper Jones there on the bench. And it was 11 to 7 the final in Yankee Stadium. The Yankees beating Cleveland. Ivan Nova going to 5 and 4 with that win. And the loser Fausto Carmona now three and eight with a 5.71 ERA. That's holding the Indians back. Out into center field. He caught the curveball and lifted it. And Ross has a hit. So the Braves have everybody among the starting eight other than the pitcher in the hit column tonight. Matt Young's coming up. Young is two for four with an RBI. The Giants lead the Reds one nothing after two in San Francisco with Ryan Vogelsong, one of the surprise pitchers of the year, on the mound for San Francisco against Travis Wood. That's in for strike one. Deore Hernandez is on deck. In San Diego, it's Washington two, the Padres nothing. Bottom of the third with Jason Marquis on the hill for the Nationals against Matt Latos. 
Anthony Rizzo got a triple last night in his debut. San Diego. Little roller first base. Brad Wallace there stepping on the bag. Two outs. Ross to second. Matt Young there. We talked about him earlier. Born in Temple. Went to high school in the Dallas area. But he was another one of those guys who was uh, not drafted. Signed as a free agent. Pretty amazing with as many players that get picked in the amateur draft that a guy that was missed in the draft could ultimately play in the big leagues. True. Hernandez, a 316 hitter with a homer and four runs batted in, has had 19 at bats. Been a good pinch hitter, five for 11 with a homer and four driven in. Sanchez to his right throws looping throw to Wallace right there on target for the third out. No runs a hit a runner stranded moving to the last of the ninth. The Braves had built a huge lead 11 to 2. Money saving car insurance quote. Call 1 800 Progressive today. In downtown Houston, there will be fireworks after the game. And the Braves have let it loose during the game. They've built this 11 2 lead. Christian Martinez comes in. He has an 0 2 record and a 3.10 ERA. JD. Not everybody on their staff has an ERA below league average. Including uh, young Christian Martinez. And it's been tough to hit too. With that 184 batting average against. Scott Linebrink had a hitless inning in the eighth with one walk, and two strikeouts. We found one of those. Uh, Aggie hey, hey, hey come on, you Aggies. Well, let's see. They kiss after the touchdowns, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so all right, on every score. So they must be like two runs for the home team tonight. Yeah, I think they're taking liberties with the policy. Yeah, they are. Or they're in anticipation of Carlos Corporan knocking the ball out of the park here. Ooh, good swing. Strike one as he makes his first plate appearance with the Astros. Well, you only get one chance to make a first impression. You might as well swing big. He has had one major league at bat. That was in 2009 with Milwaukee, and he got a hit. He had 15 days of service time that year. So at age 27, he's back, and it's a 1 1 count. So, what year was that? 09. He's got a three year hitting streak going? <laughs> yeah, he does. It's a lot of pressure in this at bat. Boom! He's two for two. Out into right center field. Carlos Corporan still hitting 1,000. That's some kind of pressure to maintain wow. that batting average. He's hitting 2,000 now. <laughs> And a nice welcome to the Astros hit for Carlos Corporan. It, it seems like a very uh, affable young guy. Yes. 
I only had a chance to talk with him briefly, but Steve Campbell interviewed him for the Chronicle, and, and he told Steve the story when he broke his hand that he didn't come out of the game right away because he thought it wasn't polite to leave the game oh, wow. and turn the inning. So he finished the inning with a broken hand. Gee. Drive to J.R. Tolls. Well, here he is making his Astros debut tonight. His wife and new baby are in Oklahoma City, and the baby just had heart surgery. Popped up. Freeman comes over. Yeah, this game does put some uh, demands on you from time to time. And, and boy, I know that the day of the surgery, I think he, ju he jumped on a bus with Oklahoma City there heading to Omaha. Yeah. And he was on the disabled list with that fractured right middle finger for a month. Just came off the DL on June 7th, three days ago. And he replaced Robinson Cancel as the backup catcher. Cancel had been catching Jordan Lyles at Oklahoma City, but now that Corcoran's healthy again, he will take that assignment tomorrow night. And we'll see if he's still hitting a thousand by this time tomorrow night. Bounce foul. Still over two to Jr. With Matt Downs on deck. Melky Cabrera hit his ninth homer for the Royals tonight. They lead the Angels 2 0 in the fourth. And Billy Butler belted number six. Strikeout, and that's out number one. They are 0 for 4 tonight. He was showing some pretty good movement, a la Tim Hudson there. Yes, he did. Matt Downs grounded a shortstop in the fifth inning. He walked in the seventh. He entered the game in a double switch in the number nine spot in the order. Michael Bourne's on deck. Eight hits for the Astros. And that's strike one. Get the long ball. Number four from Downs, and only 65 at bats. Has a slugging percentage over 500. And a semi standing ovation from the faithful here, despite the fact that the Astros are being drilled. Nice to see. Sticking around for fireworks, but they get a little bonus for this two run jack off the bat of Mac Downs. Pretty good pop. He does. Well, four homers, 16 runs batted in for Downs. And Michael Bourne fouls it. Michael has three hits tonight. Going to the count. Downs continues to deliver solid at bats. Has an OPS of well over 870. Smacked on the line. That's a fourth hit for Michael Bourne. That's going to go all the way to the bullpen warning track. And another double for Michael Bourne. Four hits, three of them extra bases. Now, what a night. You know, it gets lost a little bit in this lopsided game, but Michael Bourne is having one of his best nights ever as a major leaguer. Even last time when he went, went out, he hit the ball pretty well. He doubles a triple, a single. He scored two of the Astros' four runs. Four hit game for Michael Bourne. Angel Sanchez had a four hit game. That ties Michael's high, four hits in a major league game. Sanchez 0 for 4 with an RBI tonight. He looks at strike one. Well, the Astros put a little something together. They are double figures with 10 hits and four runs tonight. What are those Aggies doing now? 
afraid to look. <laughs> <laughs> no balls, two strikes. The third time in Michael Bourne's career he's had a four hit game in the majors. That's a strike, and Sanchez is caught looking. Two outs. Jason Michaels. 0 for 2 tonight. Hunter Pence left the game with lower back tightness after getting a single in the third inning, extending his hitting streak to 21 games. He was 1 for 2. Michaels took over for him. Oakland just got four in the top of the ninth, still batting, leading 7 5 at Chicago. Out into right center field for J. Mike. And on the run, Matt Young for the final out. The Astros in the ninth inning stir it up. They get two runs on three hits and leave a man. And in game one of this four game series, the final is the Braves 11 and the Astros 4. <laughs>